hedgehog learns to fly. It's too bad, sighed Prickles from the depths of his armchair. Why can't hedgehogs train to be pilots? Why can't I learn to fly? The candle cast a warm light on Prickles as he sat reading, in silence broken only by the rustle of paper as he turned the pages. Prickles was fascinated by aeroplanes, and he was lost in a world of cockpits, propellers and jet engines. Above all else, Prickles wanted to fly. From a darkened corner of the little room, an earwig sniffed, Flying hedgehogs? Whatever next? The idea was so crazy, he said nothing. Totally absorbed, Prickles went on reading until the first blackbird sang in the dawn. Then he closed his book regretfully, rubbed his eyes and stepped outside to smell the fresh morning air. Shuffling along in a dream down his favourite path, he hardly noticed the hedgerows, scented with honeysuckle and sparkling with dew. If I were a bird, he remarked, as he watched the sparrows hopping and fluttering in the bushes, I could at least fly a little way. That would be better than nothing, he added wistfully. What did you say? asked a kindly voice. It was Mrs. Badger, out on her morning ramble. What's on your mind, my dear old friend? I spoke to you a minute ago, but you didn't see me. Oh, Mrs. Badger, said Prickles rather tearfully, if only I could build an aeroplane, I could learn to fly. Mrs. Badger took Prickles quite seriously. An aeroplane is far too complicated, she said sensibly. But you could make a balloon. All you need is a basket and a canopy and a lot of hot air. It should be quite easy. I'll give you a hand. We'll design it together, said Prickles excitedly. I've got an old laundry basket, but what shall we use for a canopy? You just leave that to me, said Mrs. Badger mysteriously. Half an hour later, Prickles answered a brisk knock at his door. Mrs. Badger stood on the step, her basket piled high with silk petticoats of every shade and colour. Here's your canopy, she said. I always knew that Grandmother's petticoats would come in useful, though I must admit I never thought they'd be turned into a balloon. Mrs. Badger left the petticoats at Prickle's house and then hurried off to fetch her sewing machine. As soon as it was installed, she set to work. It took her three days to make the canopy, but when it was finished, she had to say that she had made a beautiful piece of patchwork. Meanwhile, Prickles busied himself with the preparations for his journey. He talked to the blacksmith, who made a small tin burner to warm up the air in the canopy. Then he managed to borrow some maps and found an old telescope tucked away in his study. He was not exactly sure where his adventure would take him, so he planned his luggage very carefully. He made a long list of stores and packed plenty of warm blankets, rope, matches, ballast, and even a ball of twine. When all his equipment was stowed away in the basket, Prickles added just one or two luxuries. He raided his larder and found some dandelion tea, a dozen quail's eggs, and some jellied worms. At last, all the preparations were complete, and the day for the launch dawned bright and clear. Prickles took everything to the launching site, and Mrs. Badger came with him to watch the great event. There was great excitement when the blacksmith arrived with the burner. Prickles fussed about until it was fitted into place beneath the balloon. Then he lit the wick carefully with one of his matches. Don't forget to hammer in the stake, cried Mrs. Badger urgently. The balloon will take off without you. And up it went. Prickles had to scramble and wriggle into the basket as the balloon rose majestically off the ground. Hurrah! 
shouted Mrs. Badger as loud as she could. Good luck, cried the blacksmith, waving his apron. Godspeed! And their voices grew fainter and fainter as the balloon lifted up into the sky. This is wonderful, sighed Prickles, leaning back in the basket. Up and up he went, higher and higher. Soon he was over the trees and above the hills, across the mountains, then over the vast ocean, with the whole world lying small and round beneath him. Prickles was so entranced by everything he saw, he was quite unprepared for disaster. But suddenly, there was an awful tearing sound, and the dreadful swoosh of air escaping. The balloon faltered for a moment, then began to plunge towards the ocean, gathering speed as it went. Panic-stricken, Prickles looked above him. His spines had caught in the silk, and the canopy was ripped and torn. What shall I do? moaned Prickles, almost paralyzed with fright. I can't swim! But as the ocean rushed towards him, he had a brilliant idea. Delving into the bottom of the basket, he pulled out his ball of twine, then plucked a spine from his back to serve as a needle and started to stitch furiously. The canopy was repaired in the nick of time. Prickles breathed a sigh of relief as the balloon began to rise again. Thank goodness for that, he said when his limbs stopped trembling. The balloon rose further and further above the clouds until Prickles found himself drifting peacefully among the stars and planets. He passed the moon and studied it through his telescope. Then he spent several happy hours looking at the Milky Way. After a while, he began to feel tired and decided to search for somewhere to land. He consulted his maps and decided that Mars would be as good a place as any. It was not very long before the balloon reached Mars, but landing on the planet proved far more difficult than Prickles had imagined. How could he get down? If he let all the hot air escape, he could be stranded on Mars forever. Well, thought Prickles, if hot air rises, then I should think that cold air wouldn't. So I'll let the air cool down, then the balloon should sink. Hoping for the best, he took a deep breath and blew the fire out. It worked all right. Before he knew what was happening, Prickles was hurtling towards the ground at terrifying speed. He had a very bumpy landing. First, there was an almighty thud, then a shattering somersault as the basket was dragged along the ground. Prickles clung on for dear life, wondering if the adventure was worth it. At last, the dreadful tumbling stopped. Prickles shook himself and peered about him. He was horribly disappointed. There was nothing to see, just an endless vista of dust, and rocks and craters. What a miserable place, moaned poor Prickles, and he sat down, longing for the comforts of his own leafy hollow. Suddenly, there was a scratching sound from one of the craters. A long snout appeared, then a bright pair of eyes. In a second or two, Prickles was looking at the strangest animal he had ever seen. Well, bless my soul, gasped Prickles. Could you possibly be a hedgehog? I could ask the same of you, the creature replied crossly. But then his expression changed into a lovely smile. My name is Sam, he said. This is a wonderful surprise. We've never had a visitor before. Come and meet the family. Wait a moment, called Prickles as he rummaged in the basket. I've got one or two rather delicious things to eat. I think you might like them. And he produced his quail's eggs, jellied worms, and the last of the cucumber sandwiches. Of course, Sam's family wanted to hear about Prickles' journey. He had a wonderful evening describing all his terrifying adventures. When he had finished, there was a moment's silence. Then Sam said gravely, You'll never get me going up in one of those balloons. All too soon, Prickles' visit drew to an end. 
It was time to leave his new friends, and everyone gathered round to see him go. They brought lots of presents, neatly wrapped in coloured canvas bags. Sam gave him a beautiful carving of a Martian hedgehog, made of a strange coloured rock. Mrs. Sam made Prickles one of her very special cakes, and the children gave him the best fossils from their collection. Prickles wiped away a tear as he said goodbye, but he was not too unhappy. He knew that he would be back to see them all again, because there was one thing he loved doing above all else. He loved flying.